Haiti's Prime Minister Ariel Henry has agreed to resign after weeks of increasing gang violence. His announcement follows crisis talks between Caribbean leaders and U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. The country has been described as being at a tipping point as armed criminal gangs overwhelm the capital. The gangs have been demanding Henri's resignation for weeks as they unleashed what some have called a low-scale civil war, leaving scores dead and thousands homeless. Haiti is rapidly descending into anarchy. Violence in the capital, Port-au-Prince, continues to escalate, and armed gangs now control large swathes of the city. The alliance of gangs warned of civil war if Prime Minister Ariel Henry did not step down. And with the international airport closed to all flights, he's been stranded in Puerto Rico, unable to return. At an emergency summit, the group of Caribbean nations known as CARICOM concluded that the troubled nation needed new leadership, a multinational security force and money. The Prime Minister apparently got the message and made this statement. Last night, the Council of Ministers agreed to put a transitional presidential council in place. The members of the council will be selected in agreement with different sectors of the national life. The government I am running will remove itself immediately after the establishment of said council. It came shortly after US Secretary of State Antony Blinken said Washington would double aid to Haiti, including another $100 million for an international security force to restore order. We support the plan to create a broad-based, inclusive, independent presidential college. Second, enable the swift deployment of the multinational security support mission. And third, through that deployment, through a reinforced Haitian national police, create the security conditions that are necessary to hold free and fair elections. To Haitians stuck in the middle of gang violence for weeks, these CARICOM-backed promises mean very little. What they want is a solution driven by Haitians. CARICOM cannot do anything for us. It's like when you run for the rain and end up falling in the mud. The only thing I can say is that Ariel Henry is out forever. He cannot do anything for us anymore. Haiti has not held an election since 2016. As foreign leaders scramble to find a solution, the question looms. Who could be up to the task of governing Haiti? Now, Anne-Rose Schoen is a freelance journalist who joins us from uh, Pétionville, a suburb of Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince. Uh, welcome to DW. Um, what has it been uh, like there this week? Well, it was uh, the last three, four days were not so bad, but I have to say before it was uh, special. It was a lot of gang violence, especially downtown in other areas like Tabar. I mean, except Pétionville. Pétionville was still rather calm, but everything else was chaos, total chaos. And when you talk about gang violence, these are uh, 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 armed gangs fighting with whom? Well, Haiti had always problems with gangs since its independence in 1804. But uh, we have right now so many weapons in the country and we have so many gangs. They fight against each other for the uh, supremacy. They fight for different places. I mean, if you control, let's say, one of the big streets leaving the country, the, the capital, then uh, you make money with that. If you control the harbor, you make money with that. So the gangs fight basically within each, with, against each other in order to have the most uh, profitable places where they can extort and uh, kidnap and, yeah, kill and rape. And, that, and that's what's going on, you, because you, 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 obviously you're there and, and watching this. So a, a gang controls a road and then what? It, it, it extracts tolls and, and bribes for people to go through it, uh, to go along the road unmolested. Well, that is the best uh, scenario that can happen. They can beat you, they can take the women and the children, the female children out and drape them in front of the parents. 
I mean, it is uh, very scary to leave town because you have uh, a lot of roadblocks and even when you pay, you can still be killed or still your car can be taken away from you. So uh, my case, for example, I have been two years, I cannot go home because my place is uh, in gang country, like I call it. And yeah, I cannot go back. So Haiti has been unstable for well for for years, but but when did you feel it get worse? What what pushed it over the edge? Do you think? Well, I think um, when we had the last stabilization mission in two thousand and four, and then the government of Rene Pirval came, it was a certain stability. But uh, then we had governments that started to make deals with gangs and the more deals you make with the gangs the more powerful the gangs becomes and yeah in the right. end uh, the president was killed in 2021 and uh, then everything went haywire and the last uh, yeah i would say the last two years were horrible Right, so now we have these uh, CARICOM promises of a transitional presidential council. Are you at all reassured by those promises? Well, first of all, I think <laughs> Ariel Henry has to resign. And uh, he has not yet. That's one step. This neg uh, but before that, there have to be names. They have to be put on this council. Let's see how long that will take in order to get together and find these seven people that will be the council. And will the gangs disappear? No. Will the kidnapping stop? No. Will uh, the violence stop? No. I mean, it's... Uh, we all hope that there is the multinational force that will come in as fast as possible, because I don't see another solution. It sounds like it's been horrible there for some time. Um, I, I understand. I think you're, you're, you're German. Why, I, why are you still there? Oh, my God. I mean, I came to Haiti in 1980. I fell in love with the uh, country. It was beautiful. It was to take your breath away. I educated my children to love the country as much as I love it, and they want to stay. And, uh, of course, I stay with my children. And uh, at my age, honestly, <laughs> I don't think I will go back to Germany. So do you think Haiti can recover from this? When the will is there, yes, but um, it needs a lot of will and uh, it will be a very rocky road and I, I hope, I want to be optimistic for my children, but it will not be easy. The most important thing, the country has to start to educate its population and if that's not happening, it will, nothing will happen. Wish you well. Uh, stay safe. Thank you so much for joining us. The journalist Anna Rose Schoen in Haiti. Thank you, Phil. Bye. Now, the UN says the violence in Haiti has displaced thousands of people from their homes, leading to fears not only for their safety, but also for how they'll be fed and looked after. Jamaica's Prime Minister has warned of civil war. The UN's World Food Programme is calling for a robust humanitarian response. We, we need security in order to, to, to provide assistance in, in the country. Um, I'm not great at reading political dynamics in Haiti, but uh, we, we certainly hope uh, that there will be... Uh, an improvement in security, it's, it's, it's necessary for us to do our job and to get the assistance to the population. The main roads to Port-au-Prince are controlled by armed groups. The port uh, was disrupted by, uh, by armed groups uh, last week and is still not operational. That means food can't come into Port-au-Prince by road or by sea. And of course, air service flights to Port-au-Prince have been disrupted. They've also been disrupted to the rest of the country. Robert Fatten Jr. is the Julia A. Cooper Professor of Government and Foreign Affairs in the Department of Politics at the University of Virginia. His many publications include Haiti's Predatory Republic, The Unending Transition to Democracy, and Haiti Trapped in the Outer Periphery. Uh, welcome back to uh, DW, Professor. So we have this announcement from CARICOM saying that Haiti needs new leadership, a multinational uh, police force and money. Have they got that about right? Well, they need much more than that because the situation is critical in the country. The first thing is obviously to have some sort of government in Haiti, and they are talking about a presidential college. 
but so far no one knows the composition of that presidential college. We do know that uh, uh, Prime Minister Ariel Henry has resigned, or at least he says that he will resign if when uh, the presidential college in Haiti is established. Uh, we do know also that Secretary of State Blinken has promised uh, an additional $100 million. But we've just heard now that the Kenyan government has declared that it will not deploy the 1,000 officers that it had promised unless there is a government clearly established in Haiti, and that we don't have now. So we'll have to wait and see whether this is going to arrive soon, and if it does arrive soon, whether, in fact, uh, the uh, Kenyans will arrive. And then you have the other problem, that the gangs are not going to disappear. And in fact, yesterday, the leader of the armed bandits has declared very clearly that he will essentially create chaos in the whole republic if he's not part of the solution. And so far, it doesn't seem that he will be part of the solution, but he is a huge problem. And with his weapons, it is difficult to see how you can install a new, gov a new government without having social peace. It's so, so the whole thing sounds like it's falling a, a, apart even before it gets started. And I did want to ask you um, about the role of uh, these gangs and these, uh, this, this criminal leader, this, this barbecue uh, in this, because one of his principal uh, objectives, he says, was the removal of the, 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 the prime minister. Well, now he's gone. Uh, he's got what he wanted. So do we regard him as a criminal or as uh, one of the interested parties in, in Haiti's uh, political um, future? Well, this is the problem, that he is, in fact, a criminal, but he is a part of the political structure that exists now in Haiti. It is not only part of that structure. He has the weapons and he controls 80 percent of progress. So someone has to deal with him whether it's going to be some sort of repressive military action against him. And it doesn't seem that uh, the Haitian police has that capacity. Or you will need to enter into negotiations or offering something that is acceptable. And that, in turn, is not something that uh, most Haitian political parties are prepared to do, let alone the international community. Because the international community, the United States, Canada, and France, have sanctioned uh, Jimmy Cherizier barbecue uh, because he's a criminal and because he's involved in criminal activities. So it's difficult to see how the international community could sanction a government that would include uh, the armed bandits. On the other hand, they are a reality. So something has to be done, and it's not clear what can be done at the moment. Because the first thing that, that, that has to be done, as I understand it, is to establish order on the streets. And as you say, uh, Kenya is now saying, we won't allow our soldiers in unless there's a government. And you can't get a government until there is order. So where do you think we go from here? What is the likely next step? Well, I think you could get a government because the main actors who are negotiating with CARICOM and the United States and the major powers are in Haiti. So it wouldn't be impossible to establish a government in Haiti at the moment. The problem is that that government may be completely uh, incapable of dealing with the gangs. So you would have a juridical kind of government but without the capacity to impose order. It would need, at that point, to have some sort of military intervention, and that obviously the Kenyan. And the Kenyans seem to have accepted the idea that if the government is in place, they will go. So this is not an impossible situation, but it's an extremely difficult situation. And it's difficult to see how 400 Kenyan officers can really reestablish uh, any type of order when Jimmy Cherizier has declared that any foreign troop on Haiti's soil is totally unacceptable. So we are uh, facing... I beg your pardon, please continue. 
you know, I was saying that this seems, this seems to be a crisis w without a clear solution. And at the moment, uh, we only have uh, announcements about a new government. We don't know the composition. We don't exactly know where the uh, Kenyans are standing. Because if you can remember, initially, it was a thousand officers. Now we know that only about 400 are prepared to be deployed. So we have additional problems to uh, the equation. And uh, for, from the beginning, there were critical issues that were not addressed because any government, as I stated before, will need to deal with the gangs. And we don't know how they are going to be able to do so. And they don't have the capacity, military capacity, to really confront them. Good talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us, Professor Robert Fatton, uh, Jr. Okay, so from the University of Virginia. Let's get more from journalist Harold Isaac, who's uh, in the Haitian capital, Port-au-Prince. So welcome, uh, Harold. Um, has that announcement from the prime minister of his uh, resignation had any effect on the violence? We're still at the uh, early moments of, uh, of uh, this uh, announcement, uh, as it was done uh, very late last night, and we expected to have some sort of reaction today. Uh, yet no uh, formal uh, reaction from various stakeholders at this point. Um, truth be told is that uh, there is uh, expectations with regards to the, the seven-member council that hasn't been named yet, and perhaps this is what uh, they're waiting for. OK. Uh, uh, just talk us through what you've seen over the last uh, couple of, of, of days. What have you experienced there? Well, a bit of a strange reprieve as the talks were happening in uh, Kingston, Jamaica. Um, we've had uh, over 24 hours of relative peace, uh, allowing uh, fuel to come out of uh, uh, the seaside terminal, uh, allowing some staples to be coming out of the ports, and uh, allowing for folks to resupply as uh, they're carefully watching what will happen in the coming hours. And how widespread uh, has the violence been? Has it been confined to the capital or is it across the country? So the gangs control essentially 80% of the, of the capital, of the metropolitan area of Port-au-Prince. And uh, it affects the whole country in the sense that the whole country is dependent on Port-au-Prince to be resupplied because it's, in the, it's the interface with the world. So although the, the bulk of the violence is in town, in Port-au-Prince, but uh, the effects are felt throughout the country. OK, so we're, we've seen and heard these statements from uh, CARICOM and the US Secretary of State. Um, what's your understanding of how they intend to restore security uh, there on the ground in Haiti? Well, uh, various stakeholders, including uh, local stakeholders here in Haiti, um, the international community through CARICOM, the US and Canada, have agreed uh, yesterday uh, to uh, have a proposal uh, that would allow for a council of uh, seven members, a presidential council of seven members, to take over the rule of Ariel Henry. Whether or not they will be able to deliver on peace, deliver on elections, remains to be seen. And are these criminal gangs who called for Ariel Henry's uh, resignation, uh, are they amongst the stakeholders who will be co uh, consulted or will they be sort of rounded up and put in jail? Well, they're not part of uh, the seven-member uh, council, at least not directly, and uh, they uh, we, they have yet to react, you know, to uh, formally to this announcement. Um, and... For what has to do with uh, uh, for, uh, for what has to do with uh, in, uh, jailing them, remember that nearly 5,000 uh, inmates have fled uh, last week uh, in the biggest uh, prison break uh, in recent memory, um, and are still not uh, n n haven't been reported, you know, to be to have been arrested uh, yet. Good talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us. That's journalist Harold Isaac uh, on the in the uh, Haitian capital, Port-au-Prince.